Hey YouTube friends, thank you for tuning in. Ben Ochart here. And uh, today I want to talk about decor and substrate. And um, you know, in the years that uh, I've been keeping tanks, I've used different kinds of substrate. Certainly I've gone from uh, very coarse, uh, you know, pebbles and, uh, and uh, rock type gravel to, um, to fine sand. And um, if I had to take, uh, if I had to take a pick, I would, I would say that the sand has been a better substrate, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you can see here in the 100, in the 100 gallon, uh, where I keep black sand as a substrate. And what's occurring here is I have this, uh, I have a power head uh, that is on a timer, and it's pushing about 1,600 gallons an hour. It's, it's a Sun Sun, fairly inexpensive. You can pick them up for under $20 delivered. And um, so it's an inexpensive power head that I've had for a while now. It's not as quiet and as smooth as, uh, as the one I have in the 150, uh, but, it, but it certainly does the job. And uh, what it does is it, uh, it blows uh, the uh, waste across the tank and to the uh, input of the uh, of the uh, Fluval FX6, and so it, it keeps the surface of the sand very, very clean. Uh, I had a consideration, I had a, a concern that being a black substrate, it would show every little bit of, uh, of dirt and uh, grime and <laughs> detritus, but um, with the use of the, uh, of the power heads, uh, it, it sweeps the surface, and because it's, it's fine sand, nothing is really sinking down into it. Uh, occasionally, I'll give it a stir, and um, but for the for the most part, you can you can leave it alone, and uh, things settle on top. And um, if anything accumulates, like in the back corners of the tank, sometimes you'll get a little bit of an accumulation of uh, fish waste. Uh, you can just vacuum that up very very easily. So um, my number one uh, pick for substrate is definitely sand. Now. Uh, when you're picking your sand, some people go with blasting sand and uh, and play sand, things of this nature, the kind of stuff you'd, you'd use in a sandbox. Um, if you use if if you have fish that are sifting through a lot, like your geophagus or your your cichlids, you know they're constantly taking mouthfuls um, and spitting them out. Uh, you may want to go with sand that is specific for aquariums because I hear that it doesn't have coarse or sharp edges that could over time irritate the lips, um, gills, or um, uh, set your fish up for a possible infection of some kind. Now, uh, if you have experience with that, if you've used uh, a black diamond or blasting sand and things of this nature for years, and you've never had uh, any problems with the fish, uh, with their lips becoming, uh, you know, like getting abrasions on their lips, uh, certainly comment, comment below and uh, let me know because that is a, something I've heard over the years but maybe that's being promoted by the people who sell sand. I mean, you know, <laughs> who sell the aquarium sand, which is definitely more expensive than, um, than blasting sand or, uh, or uh, you know, sandbox sand uh, that you'd, you'd buy for a kid's sandbox. So um, sand would be my number one only because it's so easy to maintain. And um, this, what you see back here in, in the 150, was uh, ordered by me originally thinking it was going to be a fine, uh, you know, a crushed, really crushed, uh, fine crushed coral so that it could buffer, uh, add minerals to the water, and, uh, and at, the si at the same time give me the advantages of sand. But then when I received the, you know, the four large bags, you know, they're like 40 pound bags, uh, it was uh, far more coarse uh, than I had. Um, than I thought it was going to be. So, you know, my mistake, not looking in, not asking questions. And so the problem with this sand, I mean, the advantage is, is that it buffers and it adds minerals. Uh, the disadvantage is that waste does sink down into it. So it does need um, a, good, a good vacuuming, at least minimum with uh, fish that produce a lot of waste, at least every other week. And, um, and it, it looks clean, like if you look at it now, you'd say that's pretty clean, and, uh, but it's, it, it just, it's very forgiving. It's like a white car. A white car actually can get uh, quite a bit of grime on it before it actually looks dirty, surprisingly, whereas a black car 
you get one little speck on it and then you've got to go to the car wash. So uh, it's very forgiving, but if I was to vacuum it right now, you'd be surprised how much uh, waste and detritus I would pull out from it. Now, some people think that uh, if you get a deep bed of gravel, you know, a deep bed uh, here in, in the tank, and uh, the bottom of it could be a great home for um, aerobic or rather anaerobic bacteria, the bacteria that needs to be in a, uh, in a low flow area that the uh, very bottom of a deep uh, bed of sand would be a great place for that. I know people in the, in the salt, uh, you know, keep salt tanks, they'll use that as a place for, for bacteria. So if you are expert or knowledgeable in that area, uh, certainly uh, comment uh, below, I'd love to hear about it. And uh, there are some folks, like I know um, half man, half, half cichlid, uh, John is, is, um, is going with uh, no substrate. I mean, he's got a pad that is made by uh, one of the 3D background manufacturers, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, I believe it's, it's uh, might be Universal Rocks actually that made it. Uh, and, and it's just a pad that goes on the bottom and it looks rocky and it looks, it looks like, the, uh, like a rocky uh, seabed. But, uh, and this, this skips the entire process of having to uh, really worry about things getting down into the substrate. Me, pers uh, me personally, I like watching the fish uh, scoop up mouth mouthfuls of the stuff and spit it out. I think the fish are waking up. You're not seeing any fish in the beginning of the video because I just turned the lights on. They're all tucked in the back corner. And um, another point I'll make about the decor is that um, I used to use lava rock, and uh, but I stopped using it because it has sharp points. Uh, these fish, and probably all fish for that matter, can get startled. And sometimes uh, they get into chases in the dark, believe it or not. I can hear them sometimes when I'm sleeping. This is, this is in my bedroom. And uh, in the dark, so they'll bang into things. And so I, uh, I haven't had any incidents with their eyes ever since, ever since I switched to decor that is, um, that is man-made. This is all man-made Universal Rocks rocks the background and the rocks i'll put a link for universal rocks and you can contact them if you want it but it's um, it's man-made and it has no sharp edges a fish can't um, you know score or scratch the side of their body uh, lose lose some of their uh, slime coat and uh, and predispose themselves to infection uh, <clears throat> or uh, bad bacteria of some kind so so um uh, I use decor that is not going to scratch or scrape the fish, especially their eyes when they're darting around in the dark or getting into a chase in the dark. That's important for me. And so, um, so you'll see that here. In the 100, I have those, uh, those uh, zebra, those zebra rocks, those black and white rocks. And they, they have some edges, but they're not like lava rock, where lava rock had a lot of points and a lot of sharp areas. So um, I do have a little bit of lava rock, the softest piece that I had left. I've put it in the 60 and I've left it in the 60. So, um, and I use it because it has some holes in it and it's kind of cool, so I left it there. Uh, and it doesn't have really any real super sharp points that can scrape the fish. So uh, at any rate, um, on decor, certainly sand would be my number one pick. Uh, number two would be, um, you know, something like, like this that, that buffers. And um, you know, like a crushed coral, uh, certainly uh, aragonite. I used to have a, a gray aragonite in the 135 that I liked a lot. It also buffers an aragonite substrate. You can get these from Curry BC, for example. And um, and and for rocks and things, especially if you have large fish that can become startled and 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 have a lot of um, a lot of uh, weight and strength, they can really bang bang themselves up. So I suggest using soft edged. Uh, decorations. Uh, also you'll notice I have plants in here that are artificial. I do have some real plants in the 60 gallon, um, some, uh, some Anubias leftovers from an experiment I did a while back. Uh, you, can, you can hear about it in the truth about plants in a cichlid tank. Uh, but um, these plants are, are uh, from elite cichlids. Uh, they provided me with some plants, uh, very nice plants, and uh, they've also offered me a uh, discount uh, all you have to do is use lowercase Ben O at Elite Cichlids. You get 10% off, and so that's a code you can use. 
And uh, if you go to Adam C, if you go to his channel, you'll see he also has um, the Elite Cichlid plants. It was Adam C that, that sent Elite Cichlids my way. So, um, so that's, that's my two cents on decor. Uh, some people like bare bottom. Uh, personally, um, uh, I don't like uh, bare bottom. It's not my style. <laughs> and uh, cichlid tanks, I've noticed that with a lot of discus, discus, they go bare bottom. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know why. If you're a discus keeper uh, and you can tell me why bare bottom is uh, uh, preferred, I'd love to hear it. I used to keep discus, but I always had gravel. So, um, so there you have it. That's my two cents on on um, on gravel. Uh, how much do you need? Um, I have found that with a more coarse type of gravel like this, I, I tend to go with a less you know less thickness, maybe a um, an inch, maybe a half inch to an inch, and that makes it a lot easier to vacuum, and doesn't let a lot of stuff get down there deep below and settle and just you know just be an ammonia factory and uh, but with the sand I the sand I have in some parts of that there's two and a half inches uh, or more of sand in the uh, in the 100 so uh, and again doesn't matter that much because it really is kind of sealed nothing really gets between it okay so um, when you order sand uh, I tend to be or when you order rather gravel I tend to be rather conservative and um, a tank like this, I might go 60 pounds, maybe 80 pounds on a 150. That's a six foot across tank by a two feet uh, front to back. And um, so, you know, you, it depends on your taste. Certainly if you're gonna put some real plants in there, you're gonna wanna put uh, something that you can, you can push those plants into. So you'll want more, more of a, more of a bed, a gravel bed. All right, so um, comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are on substrate. Uh, you know the combo gang uh, be sure to <laughs> be sure to start the conversation and let's find out about uh, what your thoughts are and your experience on substrate what's your favorite why is that your favorite and um, what's been your experience with different kinds of substrate I'd love to hear that too I'm, uh, I'm learning uh, from you and we learn from each other and then uh, if you'd like to continue the conversation over at Ben O apostrophe cichlid on uh, Facebook and certainly if you're uh, if you're into it Follow me on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid. Thank you so much. Now they're waking up.